Extension Livestock Economist Kate Brooks is our cattle market analyst this week. We talked with Kate Wednesday afternoon about fed cattle prices, farmers and ranchers holding heifers for expansion, and if there were any surprises in last week's Cattle on Feed report. Not really, you know, it was a late delayed report. We won't get into all those, right. but to being a delayed report, you know, it, it was very probably a neutral, mm -hmm. more neutral than anything type of report, just further emphasizing the tightening supplies that we continue to see. Yeah, those number of, of cattle on feed actually has been in a downward trend here for over a year now. Yes, and we were down again, I think about seven, seven mm -hmm. and a half percent over last year. Um, so again, continuing to see that decline in cattle on feed numbers. As you look at the slaughter numbers and the slaughter weights, and obviously this will kind of play a part probably in the future with Zilmax and the Zilpaterol, but are they starting to decline at all yet? Have you noticed anything? We are starting to see a decline in slaughter weights. Mm -hmm. um, there's two things going on. You know, we're placing heavier animals into the feedlot, so when we place heavier animals, we tend to put out lighter animals. Uh, and then as well, you know, the use of the beta agonists. So we're starting to see a decline in our dress weights, which again will further, you know, decline our meat supply. Let's talk about heifers. Uh, it, first of all, is there any sign that uh, there's be, there's some heifer retention here, which would indicate expansion? You know, we're starting to see some declines in cattle on feed heifers on the cattle on feed inventory. Um, we saw a decline last year, a very rapid one into the end of 2012. We saw an increase beginning of this year when we started to place heifers again due to, you know, weather issues. Um, but we're starting to see that decline here um, in this October 1 report. And the people that are buying them, does it does it indicate that they're buying them for a breeding we're, stock? We're starting to see some price differences mm -hmm. between uh, breeding heifers and uh, feeder heifers in the market reports, uh, showing some interest more on the demand side um, for retention purposes. Now, obviously, if you keep back those heifers and you're going to use them to try and expand the herd in the long term, the short term indication would that would be that there's going to be less meat available for the consumer. Correct. So is that going to be a concerning issue? It is. You know, we we have a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. We have low numbers to begin with. Yeah. You know, as we start to rebuild the herd, we're going to pull more heifers out, retain them. That's going to decline the numbers further. The other thing is cow numbers. We're starting to see a decline in cow slaughter numbers as we start to reduce the number of cold cows we're sending to market, which will further decrease that beef supply. On the way to a record harvest here in the U.S., uh, well underway, how much help has four to four and a half dollar corn been for those people who are feeding extraordinarily high input prices? You know, compared to that seven dollar corn mm -hmm. we'd seen, you know, four dollar corn is, you know, really a good number. You know, it's starting to decline those feed costs yeah. for, for a lot of guys. The issue is, you know, those calf prices continue to increase. We continue to see high record high prices on that side, cutting into some of those profits. Those those calf prices are still making it hard go. You know, it you know, they'll start to offset and yeah. the further we the higher we get, the more offset we're gonna be. With the way the current Fed market is, is there an opportunity here to make a profit at all? You know, there's still some opportunities depending on how you market, you know, mm -hmm. the animals, um, but we're not seeing much trade within the live cattle fed cattle side. Um, we're still trading around 130, um, just not seeing any increases on the fed cattle side. There was a huge spike uh, a couple weeks ago here. What do you expect as we go towards the end of 2013? You know, there's still some opportunities for that to increase. We're not seeing much trade on the cash side and we're not seeing that price increase a lot, but we're continuing to see tighter supplies. Um, and our box beef price hit back above $200 again here after June. I think today, this morning it was at 203. Mm -hmm. I think yesterday we closed at 205 per 100 weight. So, you know, there is some possibility for that price to increase. But the Packers are going to try to continue to hold on to the profits that they can get too. What about a rancher or farmer who's trying to buy it to place it in the feedlot? Uh, are those prices affordable? You know, you know that's something they're going to have to start looking at. Mm. You know, as, fed, as feeder calf prices continue to rise, you know, we've kind of maybe seen, I don't want to say, you know, a pause, right. whether or not they're going to continue to jump. They're not increasing like they were the previous four months, but you know, there's maybe some opportunities there uh, for the feeders. Uh, any big news in the export or import side? I know imports from Mexico were down while they were up from Canada, but anything big to note there? there there's not a lot. You know, we're still seeing some strong exports within the export market, um, so there's still a lot of good trade going on. Overall, uh, how do you feel about this industry, I guess, now as compared to where it was a year ago? You know, we were coming off two droughts, one in Texas and then spreading further north into Nebraska. Do you feel better about the industry where it is? You know, we're starting to see better improvement. You know, we've got better conditions in the south. Um, you know, they're starting to see wheat emerge. We've got pasture. We've got pastures coming up further north. Uh, so I think we're seeing some improvement and some profitability potential for a lot of cow-calf producers. But we're also dealing with a very high volatile market.